How you doing? My name is Codename Big Bear or Stuart if you want to call me by my first name. Welcome to Respawning. Today we're going to be talking about Project Downfall. Um, this is a video game I played. <laughs> um, it was given to us by the developers. Uh, I missed the embargo date because, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit useless to be honest. And uh, I've written a review and I'm going to read that review out to you because why not? Now, uh, I am just going to say one thing. This review does not sound like me. <laughs> I wrote it out and uh, I had someone to take a look at it and they edited it to make it sound a bit more fancy because I'm not a great writer, so there we go. But we shall see. We should go from there. Project Downfall. Anyway, let's talk about it. Uh, you should see some uh, games interspliced with everything as we go as well. So, right, Project Downfall presents itself as an enigmatic title that veers off the beaten path, delivering an experience that oscillates intriguingly between the realms of ingenuity and perplexity. See what I mean about not sounding like me? At first glance, it immerses you in a neon-drenched cyberpunk odyssey, yet delve deeper, and you are met with a game that teeters on the brink of brilliance and befuddlement. See? Big words. I'm telling you, big words. These are not necessarily the words that I would use. Visually, Project Downfall is a paradox wrapped in pixel art. The game's aesthetic is a vibrant homage to a neon-lit cyberpunk genre, yet it is juxtaposed... Fuck me, I can't pronounce words. Um, <laughs> visually in the game. <laughs> it is juxtaposed, juxt, juxt, juxtap It's mixed up with elements that might be less appealing uh, to a discerning eye. The pixel art will often, while often stunning, is in, uh, in its depiction of dystopian world, occasionally clashes with the game's Flatter. What does flatter mean? What does it mean by flatter? Oh, oh, I saw, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, literally, I've got to read the rest of the sentence now, make more sense. Uh, right, so, let's start that one again. The pixel art, while often stunning in its depiction of the dystopian world, occasionally clashes with the game's flatter, more rudimentary character and item designs, uh, reminiscent of the early 90s classics like Wolfenstein and Doom. Um, this intentional nod to nostalgia is a double-edged sword. It evokes a sense of warm reminiscence for the era, yet it also muddies the water of the game's visual identity. Uh, the deliberate slowdowns and pixelated blood splatters add to this nostalgic allure, uh, but at times it makes one wonder if the game is uh, like struggling to find the unique visual voice amidst its homages. Now, I'm making another note on this one. Like, there are some really cool things that happen while you're playing with the game using that pixel art and stuff, and there's like horror elements and all that kind of thing built into this game as well. Um, it is just, it is very cool to look at. Because there are times where like, it, it, you have this amazing crisp color, and then it gets too pixelated, and you just can't can't read the writing, for instance, just randomly. Sometimes you can read it, sometimes you can't. It's a bit weird. Um, and you, you can muck about with like settings and stuff as well. It's definitely worth looking into. Um, but yeah, visually, it's got, it's got its own kind of vibe, at least, anyway. Labeling Project Downfall as a boomer shooter, Personally, I'm not a big fan of that term, but you know, it's, it's pretty appropriate here, I suppose. Uh, it feels like a misnomer. Despite the surface level similarities in pace and aesthetic, the gameplay diverges significantly, fro significantly from the genre's hallmark. The protagonist. Oh, I get too far ahead of myself. See, this is why I'll never be able to get on TV. I can't read cue cards. The protagonist's vulnerability is a stark departure from the invulnerability often felt in similar titles. Uh, a single hit can be fatal, transforming the game's co uh, compact levels into intense exercises in precision and patience. Now, uh, yeah, it's it's brutally hard, basically. It can be really, really tough. Um, so you and you have to replay and replay and replay all the time as well. Uh, in fact, I'm going to mention that now, apparently. <laughs> This fragility, uh, coupled with a need to replay levels repeatedly uh, due to the game's unforgiving nature, can be both a curse and a blessing. While it certainly heightens the stakes, making each victory feel uh, hard-earned, it can also lead to frustration compounded by the soundtrack that, uh, that initially compelling, well, while initially compelling, uh, may become grating and loops, uh, loops incessantly in the background. Like, yeah, seriously, you hear the same kind of opening bars to the tune, the chip tune that's going on, but you die constantly, and it just gets really infuriating. Um, I did an hour-long gameplay, or not hour-long gameplay? Yeah, about an hour-long gameplay uh, the other day, 
there is a bit near the beginning where I'm kind of working out the game. Um, it doesn't really tell you what to do. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to work out the game, and then I'm dying over and over and over again to the point that I got annoyed and went, cool, I'm moving on, do something, try to do something else. Uh, and that's where I kind of found the story actually happening, so I, I left it and moved on to other areas. The game's narrative and mechanics introduce a fresh layer of complexity. The, uh, the protagonist's reliance on drugs, reminiscent of titles uh, like We Happy Few, uh, serves both as a plot device and a gameplay mechanic. This pharmaceutical dependency not only advances the storyline, but also introduces a unique gameplay dynamic where the pills enhance abilities, reminiscent of the slow-mo effect in Dread, as in Dread 2012, like uh, where everything kind of slowed down and, you know, it slowed down means like felt a bit more powerful, I suppose. If you haven't seen Dread, by the way, please watch Dread. Dread's a fantastic film. It deserves a sequel. Why it hasn't got one, I don't know. Plus, Lena Headey is incredible in that film. Anyway, uh, this mechanic adds a strategic layer to the game where managing one's health becomes a delicate balance between the empowerment and vulnerability. However, Project Downfall uh, doesn't make its mechanics and possibilities immediately apparent. Uh, much like hidden levels, uh, so much like the hidden levels accessible through an in-game SNES. I'd say SNES. It looks like a SNES, like a Super Nintendo. Uh, many of the game's features and the abilities unfold in a manner. Uh, that requires exploration and experimentation, uh, sometimes leading you to moments of confusion or missed opportunities or gameplay depth. Now, like I said, at the beginning of this, uh, the, well, bringing up the, the gameplay bit that I did, this is an hour-long thing I produced the video for, um, yeah, it really do, kind of does that. You can either go on the SNES and get lost in those levels, or you can go out of the apartment and actually start the story. Whereas if you don't really think, think about to go out the outside apartment, you think, oh, I'm in a lot of rooms, this is basically where I start, okay, cool, I found the snares, this must be how the game works, you may have a whole different experience entirely, or you go straight out of the apartment and don't even know the snares is there, um, and you miss out on these kind of new abilities, like there's wall jumping and all sorts of stuff going on as well. For enthusiasts of a challenge room shooter uh, like Super Hot, Project Downfall might strike a chord with its mind-bending gameplay and stylistic flair, akin to Hotline Miami. My note on Hotline Miami is I played it for about an hour at most. Uh, everyone's comparing this game to Hotline Miami, saying this is basically a 3D version of it. Um, yeah, I, I, I would kind of agree on that one, uh, except I would say it's, it is definitely its own game. It's definitely a whole different style of game, and I found uh, dying often in Hotline Miami was great because, one, the music actually just continued. It, you just died, and it continued from where it left off. Um, so it was one of those. That that, that was one thing that it differs from it um, when it comes to that music uh, uh, side of things. Um, I didn't find Hotline Miami nearly as annoying as this game. But even then, <sighs> yeah. I, I don't really have anything to really judge the game. I never really played Hotline Miami much. So... It might so Project Downfall might strike a chord with mind-bending gameplay and stylistic flair akin to Hotline Miami, yet it also distinct, distinctly its own beast. Uh, it's difficult to pigeonhole. Now, this amb ambiguity uh, can be both its strength and its Achilles heel, depending on one's perspective. The game dares to blend genres and styles in a way that's both intriguing at times. Uh, disjointed, a word of advice uh, for potential players, by the way. Uh, consider using the Pro Controller. The game appears to have an issue with the input lag when using Joy-Cons on the Switch, uh, which can exacerbate uh, the already challenging gameplay. So what I mean by that is basically, for some reason on the Switch, using the Joy-Cons, you can move around fine, but there was delays on the triggers. Um, no matter you press R, you'd have to wait a second or two before anything really happened. Um, and I don't know why this was happening. I, my my Joy-Cons work absolutely fine. Every other game, they're completely and utterly responsive. This one, it just did not work, for instance. So I used my Pro Controller, and all of a sudden, everything was fixed. So keep that in mind. Um, if you are playing on a Switch, if you have a Pro Controller, it's probably best for this one. If you don't, I think you might be fine if it's attached, if you're playing portable. But uh, taking a taking the Joy-Cons out and playing on a TV, uh, yeah, you might have an issue that way. In conclusion, uh, Project Downfall is a game that contrasts. It pleases as much as it fear infuriates. It frustrates. It frustrates? For fuck's sake, I can't even read. Uh, in conclusion, Project Downfall is a game that contrasts. It pleases as much as it frustrates. Challenges as much as it rewards. Uh, its visual and gameplay uh, dichotomies create an experience that's memorable, albeit uh, not always for the reasons one might expect. Whether it's worth diving into depends largely on the appetite for one's particular blend of nostalgia, 
innovation and uh, idiosync idiosyncrasy. You know, so basically, guys, um, yeah, so the game itself, uh, in conclusion, is just kind of, I, I don't know how I feel about it. If I was to score it, I would guess, if I was being fair, a 7 out of 10. Um, you know, it's a decent game. I did, did enjoy myself whilst playing it, um, but it there's bits about it that make me kind of not want to go back to it. So take that as you will, I suppose. Um, but yeah, anyway, guys, uh, that is the review. Uh, that is everything there. Um, I don't really number game number um, who could scores to games anymore. So why I gave it a seven, then I don't really know. But hey, they're, they're arbitrary, uh, so it doesn't really matter. So hopefully you enjoyed this. If you didn't enjoy it, um, let me know down below. Uh, give us a like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and guys, don't forget to be nice to each other. Have yourself a great day. See you soon. Bye. 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 See you later. Bye. 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 Just bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.